Mark and Lucy had been buzzing with excitement over their planned getaway to the Big Apple for what felt like forever. The city's nonstop energy, the promise of endless adventures, and the chance to shake off the dullness of their daily routines were all they could chat about. Stepping out of the cab in front of their Airbnb, they were greeted by the crisp fall breeze that carried the unmistakable sounds of the city that's always awake. Their temporary home was this charming, modernized apartment perched on the top floor of a beautifully restored brownstone. It was the ideal spot to take in the sprawling cityscape, a patchwork of towering structures and the occasional splash of green from parks scattered in the distance. They got to unpacking, their excitement tangible in the air, as they chatted about the sites they'd hit up, the local eats they'd sample, was and the new memories they'd rack up. As dusk began to settle in, they figured they'd peed, stretch their legs, and get a feel for the neighborhood. The streets were a blend of the old and the new, each building telling its own tale. During their leisurely stroll, they stumbled upon this old house that seemed to stick out like a sore thumb. It was tucked away at the street's end, cut off from the rest by a rusty iron fence that had seen better days. The house itself was like something straight out of a ghost story, its grandeur now hidden behind layers of chipped paint and windows that were shut tight with planks. It was the kind of spooky place that would have kids daring each other to go knock on the door come Halloween and have adults picking up the pace just walking by. Lucy's grip on Mark's arm tightened, a chill that wasn't just from the cool air running down her spine. Geez, that house looks like it jumped right out of a ghost story, she murmured. Mark, who always had his feet on the ground, let out a low chuckle. It's just an old building, Luce. Plus, it's kind of cool, adds a little mystery to the block. Think of all the stories it could tell. They made their way back to the Airbnb as the sun took a dive leaving the sky painted in strokes of orange and purple. After enjoying a cozy meal for two, they settled down for the night, the day's excitement slowly giving way to the kind of tiredness that only comes after a day packed with travel. Deep into the night, a string of soft, odd noises nudged Mark out of his sleep. He lay there for a sec, trying to tell himself it was all in his head, but the sounds kept up a sort of tapping that seemed to be calling him over. His curiosity got the better of him and he got out of bed and tiptoed over to the window. The street outside was all lit up with those soft street lights, but what really caught Mark's attention was that old house. Inside, lights were flickering, throwing weird shadows all over the wild garden. Up in one of the windows, there was someone moving around. It was hard to see clearly, but the way they were moving, it was like they were desperate for help. Mark's heart was pounding as he gently shook Lucy awake. There's someone in that old house, he whispered, real quiet. They both watched as the person in the window kept signaling to them. It was pretty obvious they had to do something. So, with their hearts kind of racing but determined, they got dressed super quick and headed over to the old house. As they got close, the door to the house creaked open like it was waiting for them. Hello? Mark called into the dark house. We saw you from our place. You need help? Then, out of the shadows, a voice came through, sounding weak but thankful. Thank you for coming. It's been so long since I've seen anyone. The guy who stepped out of the shadows said his name was Robin. He was wearing clothes that looked like they were from way back, and his eyes, man, they looked like they'd seen too much sadness. How long you been living here? Mark asked, feeling a bit weird about the whole thing. Robin's answer was barely louder than a breath. For over 90 years, he said. Lucy caught her breath, and Mark felt this cold shiver go right down his back. The room got colder and the look in Robin's eyes was heavy, like they were holding on to a ton of history. They both felt it, even if they couldn't explain it. 
Robin wasn't like them, wasn't playing by the same rules of life and time. Mark and Lucy stood there in the old house with Robin, a guy who said he'd been living there for more than 90 years. The place smelled like dust and old wood, and it was so dim they could hardly see Robin's face. Robin's voice was quiet but felt heavy, like it filled the whole room. I used to be just like you, full of life and dreams, he started, his eyes looking really sad. This place was my home, where we laughed and loved a lot. But then there was the fire, and I lost it all. Listening to Robin, Mark, and Lucy started to feel for him. He talked about his wife and son, how they meant everything to him. He told them about the terrible night when a fire took over the house and he couldn't save his family. You could hear the hurt in his voice. As the night went on, Robin told them old stories about what New York used to be like. Mark and Lucy hung on every word, each story making them feel like they were seeing a beautiful, sad past. They wanted to help Robin find some peace, but he just shook his head. I'm stuck here with all these memories, he said, but you guys being kind, it helps. When it was almost morning, Mark and Lucy got ready to leave. They told Robin they'd come back to hear more and to keep him company. Walking out of that house felt weird, like they were leaving a whole different world. Back at their Airbnb, they couldn't stop thinking about meeting Robin. They packed up without saying much, just lost in their thoughts. Outside, the city was starting to wake up and the morning light made long shadows on the street. They locked up the Airbnb and felt like what happened wasn't just some random thing. It was like they had touched a piece of history, a piece of old New York that you only hear about in stories. Then the taxi showed up and they got in, ready to leave that strange night behind. But when they finally looked at the driver, they froze. It was Robin, just like they saw him in the house, looking back at them in the mirror. Thanks for listening he said, sounding just as sad as before. Mark and Lucy couldn't say a word. They knew this was something special, something not normal, a real-life ghost story they'd never forget. As the taxi drove off, the old house got smaller and smaller, and Robin seemed to disappear with it. They knew they wouldn't see him again, but they'd always remember that night. Emma, Ross, and Patty, three buddies each with their own unique quirks and personalities, kick off an adventure. Emma, the gutsy and outgoing one, is always the first to jump into new experiences. Ross, the thoughtful and observant one, often acts as the voice of reason in the group. Patty, the upbeat and optimistic one, has a knack for finding joy in the simplest things. Their temporary digs is a rented Airbnb tucked away in a quiet street of the town. The house, though small, is snug and filled with an air of mystery. The antique decor, each piece carefully picked and placed, tells silent stories of the folks who lived there before. The paintings on the walls, their eyes seeming to follow the friends around the room, add to the eerie charm of the place. A sudden chill runs down their spines, causing them to shiver. They laugh it off, attributing it to their tiredness from the journey and the thrill of their adventure. In their quest to experience the local culture, they find themselves in a lively pub. The pub, a charming old building with wooden beams and a roaring fireplace, is the heart of the town's social life. Amidst the noise and fun, they notice a woman named Alexa sitting alone at the bar. Her beauty is captivating, but there's something about her that suggests she's hiding a secret. Her eyes, a deep shade of blue, hold a depth that hints at stories untold. They approach Alexa, their hearts pounding with a mix of excitement and nervousness. Emma, always the brave one, takes the lead. She introduces herself and her friends and asks if they can join her. Alexa welcomes them with a warm smile her eyes lighting up in a way that makes them feel instantly at ease. 
Alexa's voice, soft yet clear, fills their ears as she starts talking about the town and its legends. Her stories are captivating, filled with intriguing characters and unexpected twists. The friends listen, their interest piqued. They find themselves drawn into the world Alexa paints with her words, their imaginations running wild. Despite the occasional whispers and glances from the other patrons, they have a blast. The pub, filled with the aroma of hearty food and the sound of clinking glasses, feels warm and welcoming. The friends find themselves lost in Alexa's stories, their laughter blending with the hum of conversations around them. After leaving the pub, they invite Alexa for a walk in the moonlit town square. The square, with its cobblestone streets and historic buildings, exudes an old world charm. The moonlight casts long shadows, adding a touch of mystery to their late night stroll. They pass by quaint storefronts, their windows displaying an array of local crafts and goods. The town's historic statue stands tall, silently watching over them. Emma, in an attempt to lighten the mood, asks Alexa about her favorite memory in the town. Alexa's eyes take on a far-off look as she recalls a time when the whole town turned out for the annual fair. She paints a picture of the music, the laughter, and the smell of fresh pastries wafting through the air. She talks about her family, her voice softening at the memory of them all being together. Inspired by Alexa's story, Ross suggests that they relive that moment. They start humming a tune, their footsteps keeping time. They cut a rug right there in the square, their movements a bit awkward but filled with joy. Alexa watches them, her initial surprise melting into amusement. A genuine smile spreads across her face, a sight as rare as it is delightful. Back at the Airbnb, they shoot the breeze about the night, the dance, and Alexa's laughter. The Airbnb, with its rustic charm and cozy atmosphere, feels like a home away from home as they sit around the living room, their conversation flowing as freely as the wine in their glasses. They rehash the night, each of them sharing their favorite moments. The dance in the town square, Alexa's laughter, the stories she spun. These were moments of pure joy, memories they would treasure forever when its last call at the pub. They bid Alexa adieu, promising to meet again. They snap a selfie with her, her smiling face sandwiched between theirs. As they leave, they notice the worried looks on the faces of the other patrons. The pub, once buzzing with laughter and chatter, now seems quiet and somber. The friends exchange puzzled looks but brush it off, chalking it up to the late hour. They flip through their photos, reliving the fun night. The photos, each one a frozen moment in time, bring back a flood of memories. But when they get to the selfie with Alexa, they gasp in shock. Alexa isn't there. Instead, there's just an empty space where she should have been. The room suddenly feels colder, and an eerie feeling settles over them. The laughter dies down, replaced by a heavy silence. Something isn't right. The friends, still in shock, stare at the photo. The empty space where Alexa should have been seems to mock them. They look at each other, their faces pale in the dim light of the room. The laughter and joy from earlier seem like a distant memory now. The room, once filled with warmth and camaraderie, now feels cold and eerie. They rack their brains trying to make sense of what happened. They recall their interactions with Alexa, looking for any signs they might have missed. They remember her warm smile, her captivating stories, and her laughter. They remember the dance in the town square, the moonlight casting long shadows on the cobblestone streets. They remember the joy they felt, the memories they created. But none of it adds up. They spend the rest of the night in silence, each lost in their own thoughts. The Airbnb, once a place of comfort, now feels strange and unfamiliar. The antique decor, the paintings on the walls, the chill in the air. 
Everything reminds them of Alexa. The night drags on, the silence only broken by the occasional sigh. As dawn breaks, they decide to hit the road. The town, with its charming streets and friendly locals, now holds a sense of unease for them. They pack their bags, their movements mechanical and devoid of any conversation. The Airbnb, once a home away from home, is now just a reminder of the mysterious woman who vanished from their photo. They leave the town, the memories of the night still fresh in their minds. The drive is quiet, each of them lost in their own thoughts. The image of Alexa's smiling face, now just an empty space in their photo, haunts them. They promise to keep in touch to try and find out more about Alexa. But deep down, they know that the mystery of Alexa, the woman who disappeared from their photo, would remain unsolved. Jessica is a hardworking student. She had to go to Buffalo City for a school project. She had never been there before, but was excited to go because she heard it was a beautiful city. She planned her trip carefully. She bought her tickets, packed her bags, and learned about the city. She wanted to enjoy her visit, not just for her project, but also to satisfy her curiosity. On the day of her trip, she woke up early, checked her luggage, and took a taxi to the airport. She was both excited and nervous because this was her first trip alone. The flight was long, but Jessica didn't mind. She spent the time reading about Buffalo City and making notes for her project. When the plane started to land, she looked out of the window, eager to see the city. A taxi took her from the airport to her Airbnb. Jessica was amazed by the city of Buffalo, the buildings, the people, the environment. Everything was as beautiful as she had imagined. She couldn't wait to explore the city and start working on her project. Her Airbnb was a big house in a quiet neighborhood. It was late when she arrived, but the house was well lit and welcoming. She paid the taxi driver, picked up her luggage, and walked up to the front door. When she opened the door and went inside, she was surprised by how big the house was. The house was nicely decorated with a big hall that led to different rooms. Jessica's room was on the right. It was cozy and comfortable, perfect for her stay, but she was curious about the left side of the house because it was dark and mysterious. After freshening up and having dinner, Jessica decided to explore the left side of the house. She found a torch and started her adventure. The light from the torch showed strange paintings on the wall. Some showed monsters, while others were blank. It was creepy, but Jessica was too curious to stop. She walked down the hallway, her heart beating fast. At the end of the hallway, she found a door. It was old and had a sign that said, please don't open, but Jessica couldn't resist. She unlocked the door and went into a room filled with dust and cobwebs. It was clear that no one had been in this room for a long time. Suddenly, she heard an angry voice. Jessica turned around, her heart pounding. A man came out of the shadows, asking who she was. He said he was the owner of the house and told her to leave. Scared, Jessica ran out of the room and called 911. When the police arrived, they found nothing but a dusty storeroom. There were no paintings and no angry man. Was it all just Jessica's imagination, or was there something more to the house? Jessica was shook up after her run-in with the angry man. She'd never dealt with anything like this before. She was just a student, not some ghost hunter. But she couldn't shake off what she had seen and heard. There was something off about the house, and she was dead set on figuring out what it was. The next day, Jessica hit the books. She dug up the history of the house online. Turns out the house was built way back in the late 1800s and was owned by a loaded businessman. The guy was a bit of a hermit hardly ever seen outside his house. He was nuts about art and had a ton of paintings, but one day he vanished into thin air 
and the house was left to rot. Jessica couldn't help but wonder if the angry man she bumped into was the businessman. But that didn't explain the weird paintings and the locked room. She decided to swing by the local library to learn more about the businessman and his art collection. At the library, Jessica found old newspaper clippings about the businessman. He was a bit of a hot topic in the city. Some folks admired him for his success, while others couldn't stand his quirks. But everyone agreed on one thing. His art collection was top-notch. She spent hours at the library, poring over articles about the businessman and his art collection. She found out that the businessman had a thing for monster mythology. He believed that monsters were just misunderstood creatures, and he used his art collection to tell their stories. This explained the monster paintings in the house. But what about the blank paintings and the locked room? Jessica was more puzzled than ever. Back at the house, Jessica mustered up her courage and ventured to the left side of the house. She took another look at the paintings. This time, she noticed something she hadn't seen before. The blank paintings weren't blank at all. They were painted with a type of paint that only showed up under certain light conditions. Jessica shone her torch on the paintings, and images started to pop up. They were scenes from the businessman's life. There was a painting of him as a young man standing in front of the house. Another painting showed him in his art studio, surrounded by his paintings. The last painting was of him standing in front of the locked room, a sad look on his face. Jessica finally got it. The paintings were telling a story, the story of the businessman and his life. But there was still one piece of the puzzle missing, the locked room. Taking a deep breath, Jessica unlocked the door and stepped inside. The room was filled with dust and cobwebs, just like before. But this time, she noticed a painting on the wall. It was a portrait of the businessman. Underneath the portrait, there was a plaque with an inscription, in memory of a misunderstood man. Jessica felt a wave of sympathy for the businessman. She decided to lend him a hand. She cleaned the room, restored the paintings, and even held an art exhibition in his honor. The exhibition was a hit, and the businessman's story was finally told. From that day forward, Jessica never ran into the angry man again. She wrapped up her assignment and headed home, but she would never forget her experience in Buffalo City. It taught her that things aren't always what they seem and that everyone has a story to tell.